Hi students, this is the lecture video for unit, uh, unit on trigonometry, unit 34. And before I get into it, I want to tell you that this is a long unit and this will be a long video. So plan on pausing this and uh, you know watching it maybe in two or three takes and maybe even uh, watching it over again. This is probably one of the most important units in the entire text. This is where we introduce the, uh, the trigonometric functions and we'll get to talking about some of the applications of trigonometric functions. So let's get it going. A little bit slow today. Here we go. Coming up now. Also be a long delay before we get over to the iPad. Okay, there it is. So unit 34. Uh, title is right angle or right triangle trigonometry. Uh, this is trigonometry of triangles where one of the three angles is a right angle or 90 degree angle. The objectives in this unit are to discuss the Pythagorean theorem, including what it's used for and how it is used, explain what trigonometry is and identify the three sides of a triangle, identify and describe the three principal functions of trigonometry and discuss the meanings of SOHCAHTOA, S-O-H-C-A-H-T-O-A, Explain what a sine bar is and how it is used. Sine bar is a piece of measuring equipment that's uh, used in a machine shop, on the machine shop floor. So to get started, the Pythagorean theorem right out of the box. Uh, the Pythagorean theorem says that the there's a, a single equation that relates the lengths of the sides of a right triangle. And this is a right triangle noted by the little box there, noting that that's a 90 degree angle. The side that's all the way across the uh, triangle, we denote that with a letter H, which is short for hypotenuse. And then the other two sides are denoted with the symbols lowercase b and lowercase a. The capital A and capital B that you see in this figure denote the angles that are closest to the, um, the, the symbols are closest to the vertex of. So for instance, we would call this angle A and this angle B. Now the Pythagorean theorem says that that relationship is that if I take the two shorter sides, which are the sides uh, noted by symbol A, square that, add to it the other shorter side, the one noted by symbol B in the figure to the left, that's equal to the square of the hypotenuse. And that could be modified a little bit. If we took the square root of each side, we'd get that the hypotenuse is equal to the square root of A squared plus B squared. Just uh, that's the same uh, theorem, just a little bit different version of it. We also could, um, I'll go over here to the left, if we were to solve this for A or B, we would get, for instance, that A is equal to the square root of H squared minus B squared. And side B, if we were to solve that original equation for B, we would get that B is equal to the square root of H squared minus A squared. So there's all the formulas related to the Pythagorean theorem. There are four of them listed there. 
The fifth one down here is the relationship between angles A and angles B. Since a triangle has 180 degrees total and the right angle makes up 90 of those, it makes up half of the total uh, number of degrees inside of the uh, triangle. It means that the other two angles, angle A plus angle B, have to add up to give you 90 degrees. And if you remember, we had a special name for that. We called them complementary. So angles A and angles B are complementary angles, always in a right triangle. And that's the exclusive focus of this unit is right triangles and the relationships between sides and angles of a right triangle. And this is the first one. This is, relates the lengths of all the three sides of a right triangle. The triangle that's shown um, also has uh, lengths three, four, and five. And with that relationship, um, we have that the two squares, uh, three squared is equal to nine, and four squared is equal to 16. When we add those together, we get 25. So that would be the square of the hypotenuse. And if you wanted to know the length of the hypotenuse, you would take the square root of 25 and find out that it is five units. Whatever units we're working with, whether those are inches or centimeters or miles or parsecs or light years, um, the relation holds true. Now there's some verbiage we talk about with a right triangle. For instance, um, the side that's opposite the right angle is called the hypotenuse. We already mentioned that. And for the, uh, the sides that are opposite angle A, which if you follow the, uh, the blue line, it shows you the angle opposite, or the side opposite angle A is called side A. And the angle opposite angle B, I'm sorry, the side opposite angle B would be called side B, where we use a lowercase um, B to denote, denote the side and lowercase A to denote that side. And uh, that relationship is given down below here in, uh, in spelled out in plain English. And now this uh, Sokotoa, what the heck is that all about? So uh, the S in so stands for sign, which is spelled S-I-N-E, but it's always abbreviated S-I-N. And you have a key on your keyboard that says S-I-N on it. It is in the fourth row, second column. So that should answer your question. Does my TI-30 know how to do this trigonometry stuff? The answer is yes. The C in the middle part, C-A-H, stands for cosine, which is spelled C-O-S-I-N-E, but it's always abbreviated to C-O-S. And again, if you look at the key right next to the sign key on your calculator, you'll see it says COS. So yes, your calculator knows how to calculate whatever the cosine happens to be. And then the last one, TOA, T-O-A, the T stands for tangent, which is spelled T-A-N-G-E-N-T, -E and it is always abbreviated T-A-N. The saying Soka TOA is what's called a mnemonic. It's a, an aid to help you understand the relationship between the sides of a right triangle and these basic um, trigonometric functions, sine, cosine, and tangent. The SOH stands for sine, which is equal to the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. That's the side that's opposite to angle. Um, if we're talking about angle A, um, it's opposite angle A. So, the opposite means the side that's all the way across the triangle, the side that uh, does not form one of the vertices of angle A. The cosine, C-A-H, cosine stands for the ratio of the side adjacent, the length of the side adjacent, divided by the length of the hypotenuse. And the side that's adjacent to angle A would be the side that forms one of the two uh, vertices for angle A, where the other vertex side is the hypotenuse. So if we really quickly draw this out, 
if this is our right angle and this is A, then the side opposite uh, angle A appears over here. The side adjacent to angle A appears there. And the hypotenuse is the longest side, the one that's opposite to the right angle. So if we go all the way back to the sine, we could say that the sine of A is equal to A over H in that figure that we just drew. And the cosine would be equal to B divided by H, where the symbols B and H and A refer to the lengths of these sides. So there are these trigonometric functions are nothing more than the ratios of the lengths of sides of a right triangle. And then finally, we get to the tangent, the TOA, the tangent is the opposite divided by the adjacent. And in that little figure we've got drawn here, that would be for angle A, that would be A divided by B. So for the original triangle that we had here, which was a, a three, four, five triangle, side of length three, a side of length four, and then a hypotenuse of length five. If we were to take um, angle A and write the trigonometric functions for it, uh, sine of A would be written like this, S-I-N and then capital A to denote the angle, is the length of side A divided by the hypotenuse, which is equal to three, that's the length of side A, divided by five, the length of the hypotenuse, or just 0 0.6 if you convert the, uh, the fraction three-fifths to a decimal. The cosine of A is the length of side B divided by the hypotenuse, and that is four, the length of side B, divided by five, the length of the hypotenuse. And if you change that fraction to a decimal, that's 0 0.8. The tangent of angle A is equal to the length of side A divided by the length of side B, which in our example triangle is three over four. Three fourths is equal to 0.75. Now, if you go to the look over to the left of that triangle, um, you see the trig functions written out, the sine, cosine, and tangent for angle B. Angle A and angle B have trig functions. We generally do not assign trig functions to the angle where the 90 degree or the right angle is at. We generally just assign them to the other two angles, the two that are less than 90 degrees. So in a like fashion, the sine of B would be the length of the side opposite divided by the hypotenuse. The side that's opposite angle B is denoted by lowercase b. And when you divide that by h, that's uh, the length 4 divided by 5, which is 8 tenths. Cosine of angle B is the side that's adjacent to B, which in this case is A, equal to 3, divided by the hypotenuse, which is 5. And changing that to decimal, we get 0.6. The tangent of B is the length of the side opposite of B, which is lowercase b, divided by the side adjacent to B, which in this case is uh, denoted with the symbol A. In numerical values, that's B is four, A is three, so four over three. And in decimal, that's 1.3 with the three repeating, denoted by the bar above it. And the, um, the verbiage below talks about the values of the uh, sine, cosine, and tangent that we've noted up above. And the keystrokes. If you had, for instance, a 30 degree angle in a right triangle, and you wanted to know its sine, um, example shown over here to the right of it, the sine of 30 degrees, you would just push the button sine, which on your display brings up uh, sine and then an open parenthesis. And then you just type 30 and you don't even have to enter the closed parenthesis. If you're not gonna put some function or, or calculation 
inside there. You just hit equals and the calculator will assume that that parenthesis is there. And then you hit enter and the calculator is going to come back and tell you that's 0 0.500 with some number of zeros after that, perhaps, depending upon the setting of your calculator. So if you have a 30 degree angle, it means that the ratio of the side opposite the 30 degree divided by a hypotenuse of that right triangle is equal to 0.5. And that doesn't uh, depend upon whether you're talking about a little triangle like this one, or you're talking about a great big triangle that also has a 30 degree angle, that ratio stays 0.5. Or in other words, the length of side A grows in proportion to the length of side H so that the ratio remains at 0.5. The cosine of 30 degrees can be found just by pushing the buttons cos and then 30 and then followed by enter and you'll get 0.866 and some more digits. This is rounded to the nearest thousandth. So that says that the ratio of the side adjacent to a 30 degree angle to the hypotenuse of the right triangle is equal to 0.866. And again, it doesn't matter whether you're talking about a little bitty triangle or a great big one. As long as the angle that you're uh, currently analyzing as a 30 degree angle, that remains the same. And finally, the tangent of a 30 degree angle found by pushing the button tan, which is right next to the cosine, button, 30, and equal. Your calculator will tell you 0.577 and some more digits. Now, in our triangle above, where we had the sine of angle A equal to 3 fifths. So let me write that out. We had the sine of angle A equal to 3 fifths. Well, this is a case where we know what the sine of the angle is, but we don't know what the angle itself is. Well, there's a, an inverse to the sine function, and the inverse is written um, as, take that back. It's written as the inverse sine this way, S-I-N with a minus one. So that if I uh, wanna find what the angle A is, it literally A is the angle whose sine is, and that's uh, the inverse sine means the same thing as the angle whose sine is, three fifths. To get the calculator to calculate this, this is one that's actually out of the textbook. You, before pushing the sign button, you push the second button. Then you push the sign, and that gets for you the function inverse sign, which is the second function assigned to that key. And now you can get the calculator to do the, um, the division of three by five, just by typing three divided by five, and at this time, since you're asking the calculator to do a calculation before um, invoking that function inverse sign, you do have to enter the end parenthesis, end parenthesis here. And now when you hit enter, the second line of your, well, the top line of your display will look like this. The bottom line of your display will come back and tell you 36.869897.65. Um, this is in degrees. So you would have to add the units of degrees to this. So that's you know roughly a 36.87 degree angle. That's rounded to the nearest hundredth of a degree or if you round that to the nearest uh, tenth of a degree, which is done below, that would be rounded to 36.9 degrees. Now that same triangle had a tangent that had the ratio of three to four. 
Now we can use the, um, the inverse tangent function, which is the second function associated with the tangent key to do the same thing, to find the value of, the, um, of that angle. So if uh, the tangent of A is three over four, then A is the angle whose tangent is three over four. And those words, uh, angle whose tangent is, is summed up by this function uh, inverse tangent. So A is the inverse tangent of three fourths. And to get your calculator to do that, you push second and then tangent, which gets you the second function associated with the, that button, the inverse tangent, followed by the operation three divided by four. The end parenthesis is needed here because you want it to do the three divided by four before calculating the inverse tangent and then enter. And the calculator will come back and tell you 36.89 or whatever, to which you have to put the units of degrees on there. Hey, here's example 34-2 out of the book. We're given that angle A is 40 degrees, from which we can calculate um, that angle B is 50 because it has to add up to give with angle A to give you a total of 90. We're told that uh, the length of this side, the hypotenuse is six. And uh, we're asked to find out what is angle B and what is the length of side B. Okay, well, we've got our choice. Um, first, here's the calculation to figure out that angle B is equal to 50 degrees. And one of the ways that we can figure out what side B is, is that um, if we look at the sine of 50 degrees, the 50 degrees is the angle that's denoted with the uppercase B, the sine of 50 degrees is the length of side B divided by the hypotenuse. So it's the ratio B over six. So the sine of 50 degrees, we can get our calculator to tell us, is 0.766 and a bunch more digits. Now, going all the way back to this um, original expression, this one right here, if we multiply both sides of the equation by six, we get that B is equal to six times the sine of 50 degrees. So once we have found the sine of uh, 50 degrees, all we need to do is multiply it by six which is done on your calculator. Once you've got the answer 0.766 on your calculator, if you just push times six, enter, the calculator will take the, the answer to the uh, previous problem, multiply it by six, and it will come back and tell you that the length of side B is 4.596. You also could do that. Uh, this is the way it's done in example two. You also could use the cosine at that 50 degree angle. Just by entering cosine 50, enter, the display will come back and tell you that that's what the cosine of 50 degrees is. And then uh, that cosine of 50 degrees is equal to the length of B divided by six and you multiply both sides uh, by six and you get the length of side B uh, 4.60. That's rounded from the 4.596 that I got. So that's an example of how you can use 
uh, trigonometry to find the length of an unknown side in a right triangle. Okay, for example, three, that unknown side uh, happens to be the hypotenuse. And there's a couple of different ways you can find this. One way is to use the tangent function. Since uh, we know the length of the two sides other than the hypotenuse, one is four, one is 10. And if we look at angle B, the tangent of angle B is the side opposite, which is of length four, divided by the adjacent, which is of length 10. And we can do that one in our head, that's 0.4. So now if you wanna know what that angle is, you can use the fact that you know the tangent of the angle to ask the calculator to find that angle for you. So if you push second and then tangent, it gets you the inverse tangent function. And now you enter 0.4, the value of the tangent of the angle that you wanna know, enter, the display will come back and give you on the bottom line, 21.801. And that will be um, the length of the, oh, that gives you the tangent of the angle uh, B. Now, if you want to use that to find the hypotenuse, let's pick it up over here to the right. So here's B equal inverse tangent of four over 10, which comes out to be about 22 degrees. That's 21.801 rounded a bit. And then uh, what you can do is, since the tangent is four over 10, or the hypotenuse is four, um, four over 10, we also know that the, uh, no, back off. Next step on this example is to find angle A. If you know angle B is uh, 22 degrees, now you can just subtract 22 degrees from 90 and you come out with angle A. To find the hypotenuse, go all the way back to that. We know that the hypotenuse is the square root of the squares of the other two sides. So that's 10 squared plus four squared. I'm gonna make some room. I'll show you the calculator keystrokes to do that. So on your calculator, the square root button is the second function associated with the X squared key. So you start out by pushing second And then you push the x squared key, which gets you the square root function. And it also gets you an open parenthesis. And now you want 10 squared. So you push 10 x squared plus 4 x squared. And now an end parenthesis that ends the open parenthesis that the square root function gave you. And the calculation you want the calculator to make is 10 squared plus four squared. That's what these keystrokes are. And now if you hit enter, the calculator will come back and tell you that the hypotenuse is about 10.8. And now a sign bar. Okay, a sign bar is, um, a precision piece of equipment that's got two wheels. It looks um, a little bit like a little bitty car, but it's not. Um, and the purpose of a sign bar is that along with a certain height that we can build up using precision spacers called gauge blocks, we can build up a specific angle at this point over here, I denoted that angle with the Greek letter theta, with respect to a perfectly level surface, uh, surface has to be perfectly level. 
And the purpose of doing something like this is so that you can make a measurement of an angle that you're cutting on a piece of stock, which is denoted by this, this up here. If that is laying on top of that sign bar, the, uh, the top of it ought to be perfectly level or ought to be perfectly parallel with the level surface all the way down here at the bottom. So this surface and this surface should be parallel. And if they are parallel, then this angle right here is going to be 90 minus that angle theta that you're building up. And now how do you build up that angle theta? Well, you use the fact that um, if you know the angle theta, then you should be able to calculate the sine of angle theta. And that's going to be equal to the height of the uh, gauge blocks, which let's call that for the time being just A. And the, uh, the length of the sine bar from the center of the two wheels is going to be the hypotenuse. So that sine theta is going to be A over H. And you would like to find out um, how, what exact or precise height of gauge blocks you need to build up in order to make that angle theta. And that angle or that length, that height h can be found by multiplying both sides of this equation by h. And you'll get that a is equal to h times the sine of that angle theta. Now gauge blocks, um, they come in various lengths. I don't have any to show you, but there is a video that's included as uh, one of the um, supplemental videos in the content for this, uh, for this week. And at this point, I think it's probably a good idea for you to pause this video and go watch that video on gauge blocks because um, I, I can't show them to you and there's really no substitute for you watching a video where somebody actually has this entire setup, including a sign bar, and we'll uh, show you this, the setup, the buildup, and the making of the measurement. So at this point, um, pause this video, go watch the other one, and then come back. All right. There's, there's a picture of the setup of a sign bar along with my encouragement to go watch the video. And now we come to some practice problems. Make this bigger. Calculate the length of the unknown side and round your answers to the nearest 10th. Okay, here's a right triangle with three, four uh, as the shorter sides and the hypotenuse being the unknown. So the formula we want involves the hypotenuse is the square root of the sums of the squares of the other two sides. And here's the keystrokes, second x squared, which gets you the square root function. And now four, which is the length of one of the sides, squared plus three squared, end parenthesis, enter, and you'll get back an answer of five and rounded to the nearest tenth, of course, that would be 5.0. Problem two, here's a triangle where we don't know one of the shorter sides, just marked with a question mark. But from the Pythagorean theorem, one of the forms shows you how to find the length of one of the shorter two sides or non-hypotenuse sides of a right triangle. And that is that the length of that side is equal to the square root of the square of the hypotenuse minus the square of the other side that is um, also not the hypotenuse. So on your keyboard, on your TI-30, second x squared gets you the square root function and an open parenthesis. And here you hit 10, which is the length of the hypotenuse squared minus eight, the length of the other side squared, end parenthesis, enter, and you'll get back an answer that gives you um, six. And since these are in feet, the uh, units of feet have to be put on the answer. 
Problem three, here's one where they flip the triangle upside down and the right angle appears in the upper left-hand corner. That doesn't change any of the uh, rules about sine, cosine, tangent, or the, um, the Pythagorean theorem. All that stuff remains the same. You can change the configuration of the triangle all you want. As long as it's a right triangle, all those rules still hold. And the, uh, this time we want to know the hypotenuse when the other two sides are seven millimeters and 9.3 millimeters. So the keystrokes are second x squared, again, getting in square root function, seven squared plus 9.3 x squared, and parenthesis enter, and I got 11.6 millimeters. Number four, here's another one where we don't know the hypotenuse. Key sequence is the same, except that now the numbers we put in are a bit different. Second x squared gets you the square root function. Five x squared gets you five squared, plus seven x squared gets you seven squared equals, and the calculator will tell you 8.6, to which you have to append the unit inches. Here's one where one of the shorter sides is unknown, but we do know the length of the, the other shorter side, and we know the length of the hypotenuse. So the formula would be uh, second x squared again, uh, 9.4 squared, that's the um, hypotenuse. And to get that squared, you have to hit the x squared key. Minus eight squared, again, get the square, you hit the x squared key enter and you get 4.9 inches back. So that means the length of this side is 4.9 inches. Second set of uh, practice problems here. Here's a triangle with uh, this, the vertices called x, y, and z. Uh, Z is a vertex where the right angle is at. And we have sides A, side B, and side C marked down here. And we're just asked to identify, what is the hypotenuse? Well, side C is the hypotenuse. What is the side opposite angle X? That's side A. What's the side uh, adjacent to angle X? That is side B. Which angle is a right angle? That's the one at Z. What is the sine, spelled S-I-N-E, of angle X? And that is uh, angle X has the side opposite is the side A, and side C is the hypotenuse. So the sine would be side A's length divided by side C's length. And then what is the cosine of angle Y? Well, angle Y is the other one, that angle. So if you look for opposite angle Y, you find side B, and the hypotenuse remains side C. So the cosine of angle Y is side A divided by side C. And notice that these two formulas are exactly the same. The sine of angle X is equal to the cosine of angle Y. That is always true, not just for this particular triangle. What is the tangent of angle Y? Uh, tangent is angle opposite divided by adjacent. The opposite is side B. The adjacent is side A. So it's the ratio of the length of side B to side A. And here's a table for us to fill out. Um, the instructions are to complete the table, round all answers to one decimal place. It may help to draw and label a right triangle as you solve um, these equations. Well, we're given angle A is 30 degrees. So right away, we can go draw a 30-degree um, a triangle. Angle B will be a 60-degree triangle. We're given that side A is of length three, the hypotenuse is of length five. So side B, we would find using, um, I don't think I have it written here, but the formula for finding side B, let me erase the next room.
I'll just give you the formula, not the keystrokes, but side B would be the square root of the hypotenuse squared, which is five, minus the note, the other short side squared, which is three, and you'll get back an answer of four. And by the way, that triangle, I should probably change this one right here because I can make this one work. If that's 30 degrees, this is 60 degrees. And if this is um, side B is four, We now know that's three and the hypotenuse is five. Okay, so there's our, our three, four, five uh, right triangle. In 14, that, that correlates to uh, problem 13. In 14, they changed the angle to 65 degrees. And uh, that we know that because they gave us angle B and we can calculate angle A because it's the, um, they're complements of each other. So angle A has to be 90 minus 25, which comes out to be 65. Um, side A is five inches, and we're asked to find the other two sides. So this one gets a little tricky. To find um, side A, if we know angle A, but, but we don't know the hypotenuse yet, okay. Uh, we know angle B, and we know side A. So if we know side A, we know angle A, then we can find the hypotenuse. We can find the hypotenuse because sine of A is equal to the length of little, little A divided by the hypotenuse. And if we want to find the hypotenuse, uh, we multiply both sides by H and divide by the sine. We get that the hypotenuse is A over the sine of A. We know the length of side A is 5, and we know that angle A is 65. So the hypotenuse is um, 5 divided by the sine of 65. And on your calculator, I find room to show you this on your calculator. So on your calculator, um, you'd enter five, divide by sine 65, and then you probably want to put an end parenthesis and enter and your calculator will come back and give you an answer of uh, that rounds to 10.7. So that's how you would find that hypotenuse. Up, oh, up, oh, up, oh, sorry, 11.8. Okay. And the other thing we don't know is the um, length of side B. And the length of side B, well, now that we know the hypotenuse is 11.8, we can use the same formula we used in problem 13 to find the length of side B, and that'll come out to be 10.7. Okay, 15 and 16, I'm um, going to leave to you. 17, the only information we're given is that angle A is 41 degrees and side B is 5.4. So we're asked to find um, angle B, side A, and the hypotenuse. Um, angle B is the easiest one to find because it's the complement to 41. So that's 49. In other words, what do we have to add to 41 to get 90? And then to proceed, um, we know that the tangent, we're looking for the length of side A. Um, we know that the tangent of A 
is the length of side A divided by the um, length of side B, which we know to be 5.4. So A is equal to 5.4 times the tangent of 41 degrees. And when you key that into your calculator, which is 5.4 times tan 41, enter, you'll get back 4.7. So that gives us side A. And now for the hypotenuse, um, we can simply use the Pythagorean theorem that the make myself a little bit of room here that the hypotenuse is going to be equal to the square root of 4.7 squared because we know side A now plus 5.4 squared because we were given the length of side B. Key that in and you'll get the hypotenuse is 7.2 inches. So here's a case where uh, problem 17, we were given that it's a right triangle. One of the angles is a 41 degrees and one of the sides is 5.4 inches. Find out the other sides and all the other angles of the triangle. With trigonometry, we can actually do this. With anything that you have studied before trigonometry, you couldn't even do this problem. So I wanted to stop here and point that out. Um, here's an example of a sine bar problem. This is number six. To the nearest two decimal places, what is the angle of the part being checked with a sine bar in the following illustration? Well, if we call the sine bar angle theta, that corresponds to this angle being theta. Because remember this angle right here is 90 minus theta. But to find the angle theta, the, um, this sine bar has a precision 6.00 inches as the center to center distance between the two wheels. And that's also the length of the hypotenuse of the triangle that's formed there. The triangle is kind of uh, drawn in there in red with the right angle being right here. So A, which is 0.815 inches to the nearest thousandth. And again, that's built up out of gauge blocks. And the hypotenuse being uh, six, the sine of A is 0.815 over six. That means that angle A is the angle whose sine is 0.815 over six. So if you key that into your calculator as second sine, which gets you the inverse sine function, and then you can get the calculator to do the division for you. 0.815 divided by 6.00. You have to put the end parenthesis so that the division by 6.00 is included in the calculation before the inverse sine is calculated by the calculator. And you get an answer of 7.8068 degrees to the nearest hundredth. We're told to round that to 7.81 degrees. And oh, by the way, you can convert that to degrees, minutes, and seconds if you want. All you have to do um, at this point is push degrees, minutes, seconds, curse left, enter to select the convert to degrees, minutes, second function, and then enter again to actually carry out their telecalculator to do the operation. And after the second enter, the calculator will change 7.81 degrees into 70 degrees, um, 48 minutes and 25 seconds for you. Um, when you get to discussion topic five, here's a triangle that can help you with discussion topic five. I'm just gonna show you the triangle. I shouldn't even be showing you an angle here. To show you the triangle and say nothing else about it and move on because I've got one more 
example to show you. This is homework problem four. This is some sort of a machined part. Ignore the fact that it might look like a boomerang. It's not quite, but it's a machined part. It's got three holes drilled in it, and it has dimension lines uh, for all the holes and also angles given. I want to point those out here and here that we have 45 degree angles. And what that means is that the angles opposite are also 45. So this is a 45 degree angle because it's opposite. This is the vertex. You follow the lines across the vertex. You'll see that this is the angle, 45. This angle over here is also 45 for the same reason. And that means that this angle right here is a right angle. So the distance between the two holes, which is the 5.25 um, inches we're working in, okay, uh, that's the hypotenuse of a right triangle. And the, uh, the other two sides are this one and this one. This one is marked with length x, which is what we're supposed to find. But since this is a right isosceles triangle, these are both of length h. We know it's right isosceles because both of the other two angles that are not non-right angles are 45 degrees. So how do we find the length of side x? Well, whichever 45 degree angle we choose, we can say that the sine of x is equal, or sine of angle A, whatever we want to call that angle, is x divided by 5.25, the length of the hypotenuse. So x is equal to 5.25 times the sine of 45. So on your calculator, push 5.25 times sine 45 equals and the calculator will give you 3.7123, whatever, whatever. You're supposed to round this to the nearest thousandth. So we're keeping this digit here where the two is. We're testing and the, the next digit over and that uh, test digit is a three. And that means that we do not push the two up and we drop everything to the right of the two. We report the answer as 3.712 inches. And that brings this video on trigonometry, introduction to trigonometry, and a few examples to an end. Thank you, and thank you for getting to the end of this.